Steven, my guy, buddy, pal, what's going on? We're going to be ranking all the incantations today. Are you excited? There's only 101 spells. Okay, yes, we are going to be ranking all the incantations. Now, this is just going to be for PvE. Not going to incorporate PvP at all. It will just ruin the list, makes it more confusing. Now, the criteria for this is going to be based on how useful the spells are, which is what I do for all of my ranking videos. So there might be some stuff that is actually pretty decent that just gets lower on the list because there's something else that is directly outclasses it. Now, I can already tell there's going to be a bunch of people that just get mad about my opinions and tell me that I'm not qualified to make this list. But I'll just have you guys know that I've actually played through the game and done a playthrough with every single spell type in the entire game. And I did the playthrough from start to finish. You can actually check all those runs out on my VOD channel if you are interested about that. Anyway, this video is going to be a long one, so we might as well just get started. Starting off right at the bottom where it belongs, the law of causality in the F tier. Now, just to explain how the F tier actually does work, it's basically spells that I would just never want to use under any circumstance. I don't care if they actually have a very specific use, they're probably just that bad to the point that I would just never want to use them. And the law of causality definitely does fit this description because to actually benefit off this spell, you have to take damage. You have to take five hits in quick succession. If you wait like a few extra seconds, you have to get to take those five hits all over again. And your reward for getting hit five times in quick succession is a wholly based AoE shockwave that does send enemies flying. So it can be good if you're like trapped in a corner surrounded by a bunch of enemies and they can just push them backwards. But the damage is just so ridiculously bad that it's just never worth using. And obviously this is the exact same spell that Gideon uses, but when he uses it, it actually does do something. It does some meaningful damage. And this thing, even with like extremely high incan scaling, it does still does horrendous damage. And it has a 29 intelligence requirement. 29 intelligence. Get the fuck out of here. Number 100, Inescapable Frenzy. Now this is going to be a madness based grab attack that basically only works in PvP because you can only grab other players and NPCs. But if you actually wanted a grab attack to work against NPCs, I would just rather go with the Lifesteal Fist Ash War. It just works way better. It's a quicker animation, can do way more damage, consumes less FP, and it actually does give you health regen. And probably the best thing about Lifesteal Fist, you actually can use that against other smaller types of enemies. Inescapable Frenzy cannot work against any enemies except for NPCs. Number 99, Elden Stars. Now this spell for 40 FP shoots out a holy projectile that does like no damage. Like it just sucks that bad. It does terrible damage. And somehow it requires 50 faith and two whole slots to use. What the hell? After doing like the longest animation of all time, you'd think you'd have like the most overpowered attack at your hand, but no, it sucks. They just hate holy damage for real. I don't understand why they hate it so much. Number 98, we have Vyke's Dragon Bolt. Now this is a weapon buff and a body buff two in one. The weapon buff version works the exact same way as Electrify Armaments, but it's just worse because it does the exact same damage, but it consumes more FP and have higher requirements. But the body buff version does increase your equipment loads by 15%, which is like the most useless buff of all time in a complete waste of a body buff. But they felt that that buff was so overpowered that they felt the need to actually have something to counteract it by making you take more lightning damage. What the fuck? Number 97, Orders Healing. Now this spell alleviates Death Blight buildup. Yep, that's what it does. It doesn't actually give you increased resistances. No, it just alleviates it. So it just makes sure that it doesn't reach the max of the bar, which is just stupid. Like there's like three enemies in the game that actually do Death Blight. And then to counteract it, you have to do this stupid animation where you stand still to make sure that it just doesn't reach max. And it requires intelligence. Why? Number 96, Litany of Proper Death. I'm so glad we have a whole dedicated spell just to killing skeletons because obviously they're the most overpowered enemies in the entire game. Obviously not. Now, yes, I know you can kill death birds pretty quickly with this thing as well, but there's like a thousand of other things that can do it just better. So basically this thing is just a glorified skeleton killer because against every other enemy, it just does such dog shit damage to where it's just not worth using. Even if it did like 10 times as much damage, it still wouldn't be worth using because one, it's holy damage and it has an intelligence requirement, which intelligence requirements for incantations wouldn't be so bad if there were actually some like weapon options and some infusions for faith and intelligence, but there's not. 95 Surge O Flame. This is the best spell if you actually want to waste FP because it does it extremely well. For some reason, it says that it actually only consumes one FP for every single tick of damage, but it's more like six FP for every single tick of damage. They're just straight up lying to us. And the damage itself is just downright horrendous. It just meets through your entire FP bar and gives you like zero reward for it. I don't understand how something with such little range can do such poor damage, but yet here we are with Surge O Flame. Number 94, Bestial Constitution. This bad boy spell alleviates blood loss and frost buildup. Why doesn't it give you bonus resistances? Why is it just the buildup that you can actually get rid of? It makes no sense. In this game, you can get frostbitten and bled 
just as fast he actually uses the stupid spell and wait for its animation to finish. Number 93 we have Fire's Deadly Sin. Now this spell had a pretty funky glitch going on way back when to where it just made status effect build up extremely fast. But outside of that glitch it was just kind of just shit. But since that glitch has been patched this spell is just it's going to be really bad now because basically how it works is that it's a body buff so that means you can't use things like flame gummy strength or your damage negation spells when using this one and how it works is that it encompasses your player with this fire aura and you take damage over time but enemies around you also take some little bit of damage over time but the thing is enemies typically have more health than us and we're not always going to be surrounded by an enemy so in most cases it's just going to be a flat debuff to our character now the thing that people actually use it the most for is to try and reset some frost which the frost resetting builds is like the worst concept in this entire game. I don't know who thought of that, but it's a stupid idea for a build because frost not only does it actually do that 10% flat damage, but while the frost is active, enemies take 20% more damage for 20 seconds. Why would you want to remove the best part about frost? It makes no sense. And especially in this game where proccing status effects the next time, third, fourth time, is just way harder than the first time. Why would you want to do that to yourself? I don't understand. Just let the debuff wear out. It only lasts 20 seconds. You just do a bunch of damage in the meantime, and then you could just proc frost again. If you want that type of like flat percentile damage build, just go with a bleed build. It just works twice as good. Number 92, Law of Regression. Now this spell is going to be mainly for PvP because it actually does remove all types of status effects that your character has. It does remove all the buffs that your enemy actually did use. And it also does dispel and nullify spells mid-flight as well. Now the reason why it's not going to be that good in PvE is because not only does it remove enemy buffs, but it also removes all of your buffs as well that you did use. And in terms of like nullifying and making spells disappear mid-flight, that doesn't really work that way in PvE. There's like two spells in the entirety of the game that probably can be nullified mid-flight. And in terms of the status effect healing that it actually does get, the only status effects that you really want to heal yourself with in PvE is Scarlet Rot and Poison. And there's a whole dedicated spell that can really do that for much cheaper because this thing consumes 55 FP and to have a 37 intelligence requirements. 37 intelligence, oh my god. 91 Death Lightning, oh my god. I've never seen such an egregious offense of a cool looking spell that performs this poorly in my entire life. This thing hits nothing. It misses like 99% of the time and that's probably not even an exaggeration. It sucks that bad. I'm so sick of these RNG based spells having these projectiles that go in like every random location and just never actually connect with the target. And the thing is, even if this thing did consistently land against the target itself, I would still never want to use it because Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike exists, which that one is just way better because it can go way further. There's no RNG aspect to it. It only takes up one spell slot compared to the Death Lightning 2. It has less requirements. Now it does consume a little bit more FP, but it's well worth it because it does way more damage than Death Lightning ever could. Now Death Lightning does actually leave a Death Blight Mist on the ground, but Death doesn't even work in PvE, so who cares? Now getting into the D tier, number 90 we have Urgent Heal. Now the D tier is going to consist of a bunch of spells that just kind of suck, but they probably have like one very specific use. And for Urgent Heal, I don't really know why it's called Urgent Heal because it's not that urgent. It has just as long as an animation as every other healing spell, but the healing effect is just much worse. Now the only thing that actually does do is that you can walk while using the spell itself, but being that the animation isn't really any quicker, I don't really recommend using it, except for like right at the beginning when you end up getting it, until you end up finding the regular heal incantation, then you could just switch to that one instead. Number 89, Dragon Bolt's Blessing. Now this is a spell that is a body buff that does actually improve your resistances to all status effects. It isn't by that much, but the fact that it does improve it by a little bit is still going to be nice. It also does make enemy attacks deflect off you, but it's only like a certain types of enemy attacks from like smaller types of enemies. So you'll notice that like 99% of the things in the game will just not deflect off. So it's not going to be that beneficial, but for whatever reason, they still felt the need to just give it a negative side effect and that this one just makes you take more lightning damage. I don't know why. Number 88, Swarm of Flies. Now this is a spell that has just gotten nerfed way too hard to the point where Blood Boon is just going to be the better option now. But yeah, this thing is a tracking projectile, which upon impact does terrible damage, but it actually does do a little bit of blood loss build up, which emphasis on a little bit because you're barely gonna proc bleed with any, like on anything with this thing, it's just that bad. Especially against enemies that like to move around a whole bunch because as soon as they take like two steps to the left or the right, they're just gonna move out of range of that little AOE. Now the only way that I actually would possibly want to use this spell is if you're using it in tandem with a bleed based weapon. So if you actually wanna keep that blood loss build up active while you just finish them off with your weapon itself, then I guess that could be a decent option, but there's other spells that just do it better. 87, Lord's Aid, another spell that heals you from status effects. This one alleviates poison, blood loss, and sleep buildup 
which I'm not going to talk about again how like blood loss, sleep and frost alleviation is this useless. But for poison, curing poison is nice, but there's like a thousand spells that already do this. But one thing that actually this does that the other ones do not do is that it's very cheap and it actually works in an AoE. So it actually can help and heal your allies as well. So this spell's only use is to cure poison of yourself and allies and that is it. 86 Immutable Shield. Now this spell actually does add a buff to your shield that makes it when you block, you don't take any elemental damage or any status effect buildup, which actually does sound pretty good. But unfortunately, it lasts 30 seconds. You do a stupidly long animation just to cast it. So it's going to make it pretty hard and annoying to actually use it in the middle of a boss fight. And it has a 19 intelligence and faith requirement. So it's only going to be useful for that one specific faith and intelligence build, which is only one weapon in the entire game and no infusion for faith and intelligence. So a spell that actually could be pretty decent has just been made very niche due to the fact that it doesn't last very long and it has bad requirements. Number 85, Aspects of the Crucible Breath. Now this spell is very similar to Surge O Flame in the fact that it is like a shorter to mid-range type of fire spell that you actually do constant damage when you hold on to the trigger itself. But the reason it's going to be the slightly bit more upgraded version is that it actually does do more damage in a wider AoE and actually can stagger some smaller enemies as well. But the reason why I'm still going to put it lower on the list is because it consumes way too much FP still. For how much damage that it does do, it should not be consuming this much FP. It is not viable. If they just cut the FP cost in half, I would like it a lot more because it would be a pretty decent AoE type of spell and good for crowd control. And one other thing that I don't really like about this spell is that you're always forced to walk forward. You can't like walk backwards or sideways or stay in the same spot. You're always forced to walk forward, which is very annoying. 84 Bestial Sling. And now this is a spell that has also got a nerfed pretty hard. Now the uses of this spell before the actual nerf is that it did really nice poise damage and it actually worked at a pretty safe distance despite it actually being a shorter range projectile. But the nerfs actually did bring upon the fact that it just does bad poise damage now and it gets damage fall off. So the damage is only going to be good at like point blank range, which it actually is some pretty decent damage. But there's another spell out there that just works way better at point blank range that you're just much better off using. So there's not much of a point to Bestial Sling anymore. 83 Cure Poison. Yet again, another spell that heals you from poison. I don't know why we needed so many, but uh, yes, this one just does it probably the best because it's the cheapest one and actually has the quickest animation and it only gets a 10 faith requirement. So you don't even really need a faith type build to benefit off using this spell, but like it's still not going to be that useful because like almost every single poison stomp, you can just like ride your horse through it and poison doesn't even do much damage anyway. 82 Assassin's Approach. Now this spell is kind of like the spook spells from the previous Souls games in that it actually silences footsteps and reduces fall damage, which both of these things are like borderline useless in this game because the fall damage, the margin of error between actually not taking any damage and dying is like so incredibly small. So where like reducing fall damage doesn't really make much of a difference. And if you actually want to silence your footsteps, you can just crouch walk. Crouch walking just does the exact same thing. So you're better off just using any other spell or weapon skill that just actually makes you like invisible to where you can actually still walk in front of enemies to where they won't to you, which is probably much more beneficial. 81, we have Order's Blade. Now this is a weapon buff of which adds holy damage to your weapon, which holy damage, yes, it can be very viable, but it still is definitely the worst damage type in the entire game, and it's not even close. Now this bad boy in particular actually does give you an intelligence requirement, which the funny thing is about incantation weapon buffs, they only scale off faith. So those points you have into intelligence are just going to be wasted stats for the most part. So if you actually need a faith-based weapon buff to just do some nice damage, Electrify Armament is just going to be the better play every single time because it gets the better damage type and have just much better requirements. The only time you would ever want to use Order's Blade is if you're having problems killing some death right birds and you can actually use a buff, of which even then there's actually like better things out there to actually kill death birds. Or if you actually wanted to buff the Great Club or the Tree Spear, being that those weapons actually can be buffed and actually already have holy damage, you might as well go use Order's Blade instead of using another type of damage buff because you're only doing three different types of damage. But outside of those uses, I would just never want to touch it ever. But outside of those uses, I would just never touch this thing. Number 80, we have a Garenx Beast Claw. Now this is a bestial incantation that does a pretty cool AoE attack. Actually does do some slashing damage as well, which is pretty unique because most spells that do physical damage will tend to just do regular standard. For slashing damage, I just much prefer. Now the reason it's going to get lower on the list is for a couple of different things. One, Beast Claw exists and that spell I just much rather have because it's like half the cost in terms of FP. It's a much quicker animation and it could probably just do more damage because you can fully charge it as well. Whereas Grank Beast Claw, yes, it does go in a 360 degree radius. So you actually can hit enemies that are surrounding you, which is like still a very neat situation to be in. You don't really get in that situation often. But probably the worst part about the Grank's Beast Claw is going to be the fact that it consumes so much stamina. I don't know why it has such a high stamina cost, probably because that two part animation that still is a very long animation, but the stamina cost is just way too high. 
79, we have Flame Sling. Now this is just gonna be like the basic incantation projectile that you actually have like right at the beginning of the game. It doesn't do good damage, it's a slow projectile. You can fully charge it and it can serve you perfectly fine at the early of the game, but as soon as you end up getting things like Lightning Spear or Black Flame, which you still can get pretty early on, you would just best off switching to those. So yeah, it's only gonna be good right at the beginning. Now getting into the C tier at number 78, we have Shadow Bait. Now the C tier itself is going to comprise of not necessarily bad spells, but spells that just have very niche uses. And for Shadow Bait, this spell works very similar to how the Alluring Skulls worked in the previous game and how uh, the White Shadow Lure Ash of War does work, and that it shoots out this dummy projectile to where enemies will just aggro onto that projectile itself. Now White Shadow's Lure is probably just going to be the better version because that projectile just ends up lasting a little bit longer, but you do get Shadow Bait earlier in the playthrough. But the playstyle of this spell itself is just going to be very niche, because you only really use this if you're like surrounded by a bunch of enemies and you just want them to just go away and not aggro on you for like half a second. Or if you're trying to like stealth your way and sneak through a corridor, but somebody's blocking it and you don't really want to fight that enemy because you're low on flasks, then maybe in that situation as well, it's probably mainly going to be used like with no hit runners. Anyone on a casual playthrough, I just recommend just sprinting and just spamming roll, and you're probably going to be fine 90% of the time. Number 77, Poison Armament. Now this is a buff that just adds poison to your weapon itself. Doesn't add any additional damage, it's just a poison. Which the poison status effect is actually pretty weak in this game. It doesn't really tick for that much damage. Even the total percentile damage isn't that great. It's like a total of 6%, which 6% is still nice. So if you actually would proc poison like right at the beginning of the fight and then switch to your main weapons, it can serve as like a nice type of damage especially if you're pairing it alongside the Kindred of Rot Exaltation or the Mushroom Crown. But if you actually wanted to proc Poison right at the beginning of the fight really quickly, I think the Poison Mist, Ash of War, and Spell can just do it way faster and way quicker. And then you could use this like an actual damaging-based weapon buff on your main weapon, and it probably just perform better that way. Now, that this spell also does get some nice synergy with the Poison Moth Flight, Ash of War. But for me, the Poison Moth Flight, Ash of War, I don't really like it that much. It can do some nice damage, but like there are other skills in the game that can just hit harder, and also does remove the Poison effect which can be good in terms of proccing the Mushroom Crown again. But for me personally, I would just let the Poison run its course, use an actual weapon damaging buff, and probably use a higher damaging weapon skill. And it probably just end up resulting in way more damage than the Poison Moth Flight type of gameplay would use. But using both Poison Moth Flight and Poison Armament actually does make for a pretty fun playstyle. 76, Heal. The healing spell, the one that heals you. Now this one is going to be like the most basic one. And I recommend as soon as you actually find a great heal, you should just switch to that one. At least I don't have much FP if you have like lower faith. But if you have lower faith, then you're probably better off going with like the healing over time based spells because they don't actually scale with anything. So yeah, it's up to you. 75, Protection of the Ur Tree. Now this is a body buff of which adds 30% more damage negation to all of your elemental damage types, which actually does sound pretty good. But for the same amount of FP and the same amount of requirements, you can actually go with other types of body buffs that just boost your elemental damage negation by 60%, but it's only for one particular damage type which they're just going to be better in general because for the most part, almost every single boss only does one type of elemental damage. So if you just know what type of damage that boss is actually doing, you could just pick that one in particular and it would end up benefiting way more. But there are very specific circumstances and some bosses that do two different types of elements to which pro using this spell is going to be the best bet. But once again, that is very niche. 74, Rejection. This is a spell that rejects things. It propels them. It just knocks enemies to the ground. Yes. It's mainly going to be for like PvP because like ledge killing is funny there. I mean, PvE, you still can do the exact same thing. You're probably going to find more use in, like, hitting enemies when, like, they're surrounding you or, like, when someone's blocking a doorway, just, like, knocking them to the ground. Or sometimes just knocking an enemy to the ground to, like, get a fully charged heavy attack off. It could be nice as well. So, yeah, there's, like, some specific uses. Me, personally, I just, like, never use it, though. 73, Honed Bolt. Now, this is a very quick lightning-based projectile that can actually go pretty far. Doesn't really consume much FP as well. Can do some, like, nice DPS. So you might be wondering, why would you put this one lower on the list then, if you think it's actually so good? And it's for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't really stagger that well compared to some other types of projectiles. So when enemies are like not getting staggered and then it's like bomb rushing you, you don't really have much of a chance to actually output a lot of damage. And probably the main reason is because Lightning Strike exists, and I'd just much rather have that one for PvE at least. Because yes, Honed Bolt is very quick and it makes it good at like roll catching enemies in PvP, but Lightning Strike is just going to be way better because it does more damage, actually hits in a nice AoE so it's good at hitting multiple enemies at once, and especially against larger bosses, it can just output a very solid amount of damage. So due to the versatility of that spell as well, and being that it kind of does the exact same thing as Honed Bolt, but just a little bit better, i just much rather have that one equipped almost every single time over Honed Bolt. Number 72, we have Darkness. Now this spell summons this big black fog of which when enemies walk inside of it, they'll just end up getting de-aggroed. 
which is very good because when enemies lose aggro, they end up taking more damage. So you can just use it as a way to just do more damage on your next hit. It's very good with stealth or assassin-based combat because you can end up getting the backstab and your backstab will just end up getting way more damage. Another use that it actually does have as well is that when you're surrounded by a bunch of enemies and you want to teleport out, you can just use it, all the enemies will de-aggro, then you can just open up your map and just freely teleport away. Now this exact same spell is just automatically outclassed by the quit out function. You can just quit out and then enemies will just automatically de-aggro that way as well. And that doesn't consume 24 FP, so... Number 71, Wrath of Golds. Now this is a very high damaging short range AoE attack that actually does do some pure holy damage. Now yes, once again, holy damage, the worst damage type, a lot of enemies and bosses are very resist to it, but it can still be viable. But I would still never want to use this in PvE. It's definitely going to be a PvP-based spell due to how quick that it is. And it consumes 40 FP. This is never going to be viable in PvE. For 40 FP, you can use things that just do way more damage than this. 40 FP is just not viable whatsoever. Number 70, we have a Black Flame Ritual. Now this is obviously a Black Flame Incantation, which all of them perform extremely well because they get that percentile damage over time effect. But I just think that Black Flame Ritual just performs the worst out of the Black Flame Incantations because one, it consumes the most amount of FP at 30. It has the highest requirements at 42 faith. And I feel like it's just very inconsistent as well. Basically how the spell works is that you summon this weird circle shaped AOE attack that just surrounds the player itself. And basically the way to use it is to try and bait enemies inside of it to where you can just fight them alongside your weapon because it actually is a pretty quick animation. So just using your primary weapon to fight alongside the Black Flame Ritual is definitely going to be the best way to go about it. But the AOE itself does only hit like three times maximum and it doesn't really result in that much damage. And especially against smaller enemies, it is very inconsistent. With how like the AoE is actually shaped, a lot of enemies will only get hit like once or twice max, and it doesn't really result in that much damage. It's definitely going to be a lot more consistent against like larger types of bosses, which even then I'd rather use things like Scouring Black Flame or just regular Black Flame because those can be used at a safer distance, and those can actually end up getting better damage to FP ratio as well because they're just much cheaper. But it still is a pretty fun spell to use. Number 69, nice. We have Whirl O Flame. Now, this spell I was kind of sleeping on, not really sleeping on, I took like a little nap on it because I was definitely underestimating its range, especially when fully charged. It actually can go pretty far. And with how the spell works, it has like a literal lingering effect at the end. And if enemies stay at that exact distance and get hit by every single one of those flaming particles, it actually can do some very nice damage. But there's a couple of reasons why I'm still not going to want to really use it much. That's one, it has a very long animation that you can't really cancel at all, especially when fully charged, you're probably going to get hit almost every single time that you use it. And two, if enemies even move like the slightest little bit to like the left or the right, they're just going to dodge it, like the, basically the entire projectile. You might hit like a little part of the projectile, but it'll just do like dog shit damage. And for like that exact same amount of FP, and for that long of an animation, you can just do way more damage with other types of spells as well. So it's not that bad, but it's not really that good either. Number 68, Placid Dusax's Ruin. Now this bad boy, probably the coolest looking spell in the entire game, does a lot of damage. You can like aim at 360 degrees, clear out the entire room, can do about 70 stance damage if the entire combo actually ends up hitting an enemy. But unfortunately, I still wouldn't really care to use it much because it has so many downsides. One, it takes up three spell slots. Two, it consumes 62 FP. Three, look at the, how long the animation is. You just sit in there in the air for like that long. You're about to get hit. And as soon as you do get hit, you just like, collapse straight to the ground and the entire animation just ends. Even if you get hit straight away, there's like no hype armor at all. You just wasted your 62 FP. It also is like pretty hard to aim as well. If you want to hit certain enemies in particular, you just gotta like pray that it actually does hit them. And for some reason, it actually doesn't get boosted by the Dragon Communion seal. Don't really know why it doesn't really get a benefit of that at all. But it does get some style points though. Number 67, Poison Mist. This is like the most perfect analogy for like FromSoft balancing in general. You have this really cool dragon incantation that can summon this like big ass laser projectile that just shoots out very far and that badass looking spell is just less useful in my opinion than this green fart cloud typical honestly but the reason as to why i find poisonous mist more useful is because it just procs poison very quickly you can just use it at the start of the boss fight to switch back to your main weapons and incantations and just end up doing damage while the boss just takes damage over time to poison. It's just really good. And Poison Mist doesn't actually aggro enemies as well. I know there's plenty of people out there that have actually used it against the Draconic Tree Sentinel to like make sure they just end up dying without him aggroing at all. Now, once again, poison doesn't really do much damage in general, so I wouldn't really use it that much. But free damage over time is still free damage over time. Now, getting into the B tier at number 66, we have the Triple Rings of Light. Now, the B tier is going to consist of a bunch of really good spells, but for the most part, a lot of them are just going to be outclassed by something else. And for Triple Rings of Light, 
It's actually a nice projectile spell, can do some decent damage, has a nice wide area of effect. The projectile actually does return to the player, which is actually pretty cool because you can actually pair it alongside Karen Retaliation or Golden Retaliation to shoot back another projectile. And it's especially easy with this spell because you can actually just shoot the projectile straight at your toes and it's deflected that way, so I have some nice utility there. Now there are going to be a few things of which I just don't like about the spell. One, it consumes 23 FP which is other spells in the game that perform way better at that exact same FP cost or just even a lot cheaper. Uh, two, it doesn't really stagger enemies that well. A lot of enemies is like phase straight through it, even smaller ones. And once again, it's a golden order incantation, so it's going to do holy damage. It has an intelligence requirement, which I've already talked about that plenty of times. I don't, don't really got to get into it again. But the main reason why it's going to get into the B tier for me or lower B tier is because the Discus of Light spell exists, and that spell just does the exact same thing but just way better in my opinion. It just goes way further. It's actually a quicker projectile. It consumes only 3 FP, which compared to 23 FP, I don't think I've got to tell you why that's way different. And the damage difference isn't even that great as well. It's very similar damage. The only thing that I actually might prefer Triple Rings of Light over Discus of Light in is for crowd control, hitting multiple enemies at once. And it's easy to use Golden Retaliation because you can just like throw the projectile off the ground and like that is it. But Discus of Light still is just way better. Number 65, Flame Cleanse Me. Yet again, another spell that heals you from poison. But this one is going to be the best one because it also does heal you from Scarlet Rot as well, which is way more dangerous because it just takes for a lot more damage. And there's plenty of Scarlet Rot sources in the game to try and heal yourself from. So you should just always have this spell on any single time that you actually go through those areas. Just have it equipped and use it because it's very cheap, doesn't have much requirements as well. Number 64, Flame of the Fell God. This is a spell that I want to like, but it just does not like me back. Because this spell, you only really use it at the beginning of the fight just to engage, and then you just like never really use it again throughout the fight, because it's a very slow animation, but the projectile actually does have some nice tracking, it's slow moving, and once it gets, does get close to an enemy, it does explode, does some nice damage, leaves a cool fire trail along the ground, but there's a few things that I just dislike about it. One, it has a 34 FP cost, it takes up two whole slots, has a 41 faith requirement, and you can only use one at a time. You can't cast multiple and have a whole bunch of cool tracking projectiles that all explode at once, to just do like massive damage, doesn't work that way. Why doesn't it work that way? I would like it so much more. Because using it like at the middle of the fight is just not going to be that good, especially against like quicker enemies, because like they could just dodge it very easily. But it'd be so nice to just use it as like some nuke bomb right at the beginning of the fight and have a bunch of them going around. Oh, what a missed opportunity. Number 63, we have Magma Breath. Now this is going to be the first of the Dragon Communion incantations that we actually end up talking about. And all of them are just extremely good. You can put all of these ones into the S tier. But for Magma Breath, the reason why it's going to get lower on the list is because Theodorix's Magma exists, and that does the exact same thing, but better. It takes, it does 40% more damage, but only consumes 17% more FP. Now, Magma Breath, you get way earlier in the game compared to Theodorix's Magma, so it does have a specific use. And these spells just do a lot of damage. They actually stun lock nicely, stagger well. The lava effect actually takes for a lot of damage as well. Now, if you actually did want a fire-based dragon spell, Dragon Fire could probably do it easier because it actually does hit at a longer distance, but Magma Breath actually does do more damage. But you'll find plenty of success with both spells. Number 62, we have Black Flame Blades. Now this is a weapon buff of which adds Black Flame to your weapon, which Black Flame, as I said earlier, is extremely good. All you're going to do is hit an enemy at the minimum 40 times, then it's instantly dead because you get 2.5% damage for every single Black Flame proc, which using a weapon to proc Black Flame is probably going to be the best version of that because you don't got to wait for a whole last spell animation to come out you're just hitting with your weapon every single time. Just use your light attacks. Which means you don't even have to have an upgraded weapon. Just have like a plus zero dagger, honestly, and just throw Black Flame Blade on there. You hit them enough times and they'll just end up dying. And it won't even take that long. So honestly, it does sound like it's very broken, but the reason why it's going to get lower on the list is because it lasts seven seconds. The buff only lasts seven seconds, which you can cast it quickly, especially when rolling and sprinting. But seven seconds is barely anything. Enemy combos last longer than that. You would like use it when you have an opening, and by the time you end up dodging the enemy's combo, the buff is already gone. I don't know why it doesn't at least last 15 or 20 seconds, because I'm pretty sure jawstring buffs, I'm pretty sure they last at least 15 seconds, so I don't know why this thing that has the exact same animation, basically, why it doesn't it last just as long? It doesn't make any sense. Number 61, Radagon's Ring of Light. Now, this bad boy is a very solid AoE projectile that goes in, like, every single direction, and if enemies are within range, then it's going to get hit every single time, doesn't matter which way that they actually dodge. Now, one thing I don't really like about it much is the range isn't that great, and the damage is pretty poor as well, but when you have it fully charged, the range is actually amazing and the damage is really good, especially for 21 FP. Now, the obvious downside for it being fully charged is that the animation is very long, it takes a long time to charge up, but if your spacing and your timing is correct, it can end up being one of the more better projectiles to use for AoE and ad clearing or just crowd control in general. So the way I'm talking about it, you'd think I'd put it like higher in the A tier, but once again, it's a Golden Order Incantation, so it does Holy Damage, which I love Holy Damage aesthetically, but 
it's just going to be the worst damage type in the entire game. There's way too many enemies and bosses that's like resist to it for it to be good. I'm sorry. And it has a 31 intelligence and faith requirements. Oh my god, I'm going to say it again. Faith and intelligence builds are just not going to be that good in this game at this state because there's only one weapon that has a faith and intelligence scaling and there's no infusion for faith and intelligence. Maybe if the DLC actually does add an infusion for faith and intelligence, then these spells might actually get a lot more play. But at the moment, they're just going to be underutilized because there's not many builds that you can actually make around this thing. Number 60, we have Black Flame's Protection. Now, this is a body buff of which actually increases physical damage negation by 35%, but it also does reduce your healing by 20%. And that's all types of healing from your spells to your flasks. Now, for me personally, I feel like this is going to be more of like a new game plus, plus two, plus three type of spell because I don't really notice enemies doing too much damage in regular new game. You can just go level up your vigor and for the most part, you're perfectly fine. And even then, I just use things like Golden Vow or some damage negation talismans if I'm having any types of issues. And that'd be more than enough because I'd rather have my body buff be things for like boosting my damage, like Flame Grammy Strength or Hallow Shibiri. But this spell might be a lot more useful in this later new game playthroughs because you're going to run the risk of just getting one shot sometimes and Black Flame Protection could just negate that. Number 59, the Stone of Garank. Now this just throws out a whole bunch of rocks, which is just really cool. But it is actually a pretty cheap projectile. You can cast it over and over again. Does some nice poise damage. It does do physical damage, which is pretty unique. I wish it did strike damage specifically. I don't know why it just does regular standard damage. But even with all those things, there are the stuff that is making me not really like it over some of the other projectile spells, like Flameful Upon Them, Lightning Spear, or Frenzied Burst. And that's one, you have to like stand still while casting it. Two, the damage isn't really that great compared to some of the other spells. And that's mainly because you can't fully charge it. I wish you could like fully charge this spell and have like a bigger rock that you could throw. That'd be really nice. But yeah, the projectile doesn't really go as far. It actually travels a lot slower than some of the other projectiles. And the initial casting speed is also very slow. Now you can like consecutively cast it over and over again, which is cool, but it doesn't really mean much if your stamina cost is extremely high to where you can only get like three or four casts off before you just end up running out of stamina. So for me, I would just like for this thing to get strike damage, probably consume a little bit less stamina and have a fully charged version, please. Number 58, Bestial Vitality. Now this is a health regen spell. It gives you five HP per second for 120 seconds. So that totals to 600 HP, which doesn't really seem like much, but at lower levels, it definitely is going to be noticeable. But the main reason as to why I did put this into the B tier is because it only has a 12 faith requirement, which for every single build, I recommend people just go into a little bit of faith, maybe around like 12 to 15, because you get a bunch of really good support incantations, basically vitality being one of them. The fact that you don't even need to spec into much faith or actually level up a seal at all and its benefit of some nice health regen is always going to be really good. Number 57, we have Argy Hill's Flame. Now, as I mentioned before with the Dragon Community Incantations, all of these are just amazing. They can all deserve to be into the S tier, but as the ranking is based on how useful it is, I just consider Argy Hill's Flame to be less useful because I like the lesser versions, the cheaper based Dragon Incantations more than like the named based ones, the ones that are more expensive, because the named dragons consume 25% more FP, but only do 17% more damage. So in terms of total overall damage, the lesser ones are just like much better in terms of doing that. And the lesser ones can actually be used on horseback where these ones cannot. And also with the named dragon ones, you're airborne. So if you get hit one time, you just collapse straight to the ground and you lose like a bunch of stamina as well. Now, if you are like at a higher level and have a bunch of mind, then I just recommend going with the named dragon ones instead because you just end up getting better DPS. But for like regular new game, I'd probably just recommend going with like the lesser ones, the ones that are more cheap, because you just definitely get more total overall damage that way with how much FP that these things actually consume. I just feel like the more FP efficient ones are just going to be more valuable. Now, being that we're talking about the dragon incantations, I might as well get into the Smarag's Glenstone Breath. Basically for the exact same reasons as the other one, I just prefer like the lesser versions better. But the reason I have the magic based one over the fire based one is because with like faith and arcane type of builds, you don't really have much access to magic damage. So just having something that actually can do magic damage to kill enemies that are just more weaker to magic is just going to be more useful in my opinion. Hence this one is being higher in the list. Number 55, Great Heal. Now healing spells is just going to be dependent from build to build. With my build, as you can see in the gameplay, I have like a high amount of faith, but not much health. So like Great Heal is doing plenty fine for me. So this would just end up being my option if I actually were to make a build with these stats. But if I had like more health and not much faith, then I'd probably end up going with something like Lord's Heal or Erdtree Heal, especially if I was using things like Spirit Summons or if I was doing Cult because you healing your allies is going to be more beneficial with like the better spells or the ones that just consume more FP. So it's kind of like hard to rate these healing spells. I'm just going to put them in order of like which ones just end up just giving you more health, honestly. Number 54, the Flame of Frenzy. Now, this is going to be an extremely good early game spell. It's a madness-based incantation, which they're kind of built for PvP, but these are still plenty fine and very good in PvE as well. But this one only consumes 16 FP and only has a 16 faith requirement. 
So just having this for early game is going to be extremely beneficial. Actually can still perform nicely towards the end of the game because when fully charged, this spell can do some nice damage and actually does do 56 stance damage as every single one of those projectiles end up hitting, which is still pretty rare for it to happen, but it actually can happen. But there's a couple of reasons why it's going to get lower in the list and actually be into the B tier instead of higher up is because one, I'd rather have Unendurable Frenzy, which is just like the more beefed up version of Flame of Frenzy. And secondly, towards the end of the playthrough, it kind of just falls off a little bit to the point where other projectiles just end up doing more damage and having more range for only like a little bit more FP. But this is definitely going to be one of the better fire spells to have earlier on. Now, next up, we're going to talk about all of the 60% damage negation spells. Flame Protect Me, Lord's Divine Fortification, Barrier of Gold, and Golden Lightning Fortification. Every single one of these spells give you 60% more damage negation to one particular type of element. And depending on which boss fight that you actually go into, will be dependent on which one you actually end up choosing. Now, these are just amazing because they're pretty low requirements, only 24 faith. And you just end up getting 60% damage negation to one particular element, which is just amazing. That just basically cuts it in like more than half, which is just insane. So if there's any types of like attacks you're having problems with that do elemental damage, just pick one of these bad boys up and it's no longer going to be a problem, honestly. Now, once again, these aren't going to get much higher because in regular new game, I don't notice things doing too much damage. As long as you spec into Vigor and if things still hit a bit too hard, then using things like Golden Vow or some like Talismans to boost your damage negation is going to be more beneficial because I'd just rather have my body buffs be for like damage boosting things like Flame Grimmy Strength or Hallow Shibori. But in later new game plus iterations, these spells are going to be a must have. Now getting into the A tier, at number 49, we have Lord's Heal. Now the A tier is going to consist of just a bunch of really good spells that are going to be useful in most situations and you'll benefit greatly of using them. Now for Lord's Heal, as I mentioned with Great Heal, all the healing spells is going to be dependent on what build that you actually do have. If you're noticing that Lord's Heal is giving you more than like 75 of your health back then you're probably best off going with this one if it's giving you like way more than that then maybe great heal is going to be the better option because it's a lot cheaper but if you're a person that's using things like summons or spirit ashes then maybe Urtree heal is going to be the one for you number 48 blood boon now this spell is the reason why swarm of flies this gets lower on the list because it does the exact same thing but just better for a cheaper fp cost now this spell is going to be a fire-based projectile has a nice horizontal spread good at hitting multiple enemies at once it actually does some nice damage but the best part about it is that it does leave this blood flame pool on the ground to which where enemies stand inside of it that just takes some blood loss build up over time and this blood loss build up is just way better than swarm of flies blood loss build up and actually does do it in a larger area effect now yes it is going to be just on the ground so against enemies that are flying it's obviously not going to be as good but the way to use this spell is to just throw it at the ground enemies will just walk inside of it take a bunch of bleed and for only like 13 fp you can't really go wrong number 47 beast claw now this spell is going to be one of the more underrated ones in the entire game because it's incredibly cheap and actually does some nice damage and i think this is just going to be the upgraded version of greng's beast claw because for half the amount of fp you can like fully charge this thing and actually make it do more damage than that spell and consume way less stamina now yes it does only go in like one direction whereas greng's beast claw goes in a lot of different directions but with how easy it is to use with how much range that it does get it also gets slashing damage as well, which is just better than standard damage. And another cool thing about this build, you actually can use it on horseback, if you guys didn't know. Number 46, we have a Blessings Boon. Now, this is another health regen spell, which all health regen spells are going to be good because they don't scale with any other stats. Doesn't matter what level your seal is at, it's always going to give you that flat amount every single time, which this spell gives you 8 HP per second for 90 seconds, which is extremely good, especially when you look at the fact that it only has a 24 faith requirement, which even lower levels of builds can actually just benefit of using this. And another good thing about health regen spells is that they just work with all other types of buffs. Regular healing spells, body buffs, aura buffs, you can just throw it over the top and it's benefit. Number 45, Ancient Dragon's Lightning Spear. Now there's like three different red lightning incantations in the game that all work the exact same way, and that you just like slam this red lightning attack onto the ground. I kind of wish that it worked a little bit differently to have more nuance with these red lightning spells. But they all still perform extremely well because they do a lot of damage. They don't really consume much FP. It is going to be like a longer animation that's only meant for close range, but you do get some nice hype promo, so you don't really get staggered out of it as well. And they do end up sending enemies flying. Now, despite all these spells performing really well against a majority of bosses, the one thing that I wish that I did have was more stance damage. Because for a close range hyper armor attack, I just wish they just poise broke enemies quicker. Especially for Ancient Dragon's Lightning Speed for only 22 stance damage. And for this long of an animation, you're like never going to poise break anything. But for a quick attack that's good at single target damage, this one can honestly do it just as well as other ones. But if you want something for more of an AOE to hit multiple enemies at once, then Landsax's Glaive is probably going to be for you. Because this one works very similar. Actually does consume a little bit less FP. Doesn't do as much damage, but actually does shoot out a wave projectile afterwards and actually does hit multiple enemies at once or is this better for hit detection and total and sometimes it can actually hit the same enemy multiple times now this one also does have a higher requirement at 40 faith but when you do end up getting your hands on it it actually does perform extremely well 
Now, next up, I want to talk about all of the fortification spells. Now, these are like the 30% damage negation spells. Now, you might be wondering, you put the 60% damage negation spells lower on the list, but the 30% ones are higher. Why is that? And that is because these have a 10 faith requirement. 10 faith, that's actually insane. That means almost any type of build can be able to use these things. You just got to spec into a little bit of faith, probably not even any faith at all, because most starting classes actually do get you at least 10 faith. And you can get all of these right at the beginning of the game. And if you end up fighting a boss that actually does some elemental type of damage, you can just put this on, doesn't consume much FP as well, last 90 seconds, and you can just end up taking a whole bunch of attacks. That is extremely good to have. I always recommend for any type of build that you're using, just go into a little bit of faith so you can actually utilize all of these dice support spells. 39 O-Flame. Now this spell can perform just as well as anything in the entire game because it actually does a lot of damage in just one little hit. Now it is going to be melee range type of spell, but for only 16 FP and the fact that you can fully charge it and just do a whole bunch of damage in that short amount of time is extremely good. And for only a 16 faith requirement, you can't really go wrong. But the reason why it's going to get lower on the list is because Catch Flame exists. And that one just can perform way better because it consumes way less FP, has a much faster animation. You can use things like running attacks, rolling and jumping attacks to make them come out even faster. And the DPS of Catch Flame is just way better than O-Flame could ever be, even if you use things like the Giant Seal, it can still perform better. So yeah, the only reason it gets this low on the list is because it's outclassed, but if you still used it, you'd find plenty of success. Number 38, Lightning Strike. Now this spell is the reason why Honed Bolt ended up getting lower on the list, is because I just consider this one to be better for PvE, in the fact that it just does more damage. Now yes, it doesn't really come out as fast as Honed Bolt, nor consume as less FP, but this spell just has so much utility and so much more uses compared to Honed Bolt, it's good for single target damage, it's good at crowd control and hitting multiple enemies at once, and it's really good against like larger bosses, because if every single one of those lightning projectiles end up hitting, it does a lot of damage, and with how fast you can cast it and how much range that it has, for only 19 FP, it ends up being one of the better spells that you can use. Number 37, Noble Presence. I love and adore this spell. It's a cooler belly thrusting attack that does some black flame damage over time. You can fully charge it to send enemies flying into a whole bunch of stance damage. And with how quick this thing can be casted, it's probably like the most reliable way of actually proccing that black flame damage over time effect. But one thing to keep in mind is that it does consume 20 FP. So if you're constantly spamming it over and over again, you're going to notice that you just, your entire FP bar is just going to be gone. But charging it up sparingly is probably going to be the best way to go about it because it can actually output a whole bunch of damage, especially if you use the Godskin Noble Robes, which further boosted by 20%. And then you get Fashion and a really cool spell. Number 36, Blessing of the Erd Tree. Now this is the last of the health regen spells we're going to be talking about. And this one actually does give you 12 HP per second for 90 seconds, which is actual enormous amount. Now, as I was mentioning before, health regen spells are good because they don't scale with anything, but they actually stack with like almost every other buff in the entire game. So just throwing it over the top of all your other healing spells, your body buffs, aura buffs, it's going to perform extremely well. Now, the downside of this one is that it does actually have a higher faith requirement at 38 and does consume 60 FP, but actually does do it in a very large AoE. So it actually does heal your nearby allies and your spirit ashes all around you. And honestly, at higher faith levels, I would just rather have the regular healing based spells. But as I mentioned before, they all stack with each other. So you can just throw it on top. Number 35, we have Aspects of the Crucible Tail. Now, this spell for 20 FP does this tail swiping attack that doesn't really do too much damage nor have much range. But the best part about this spell is when you have it fully charged because it actually does add a whole bunch more range and have a second swiping attack that actually does a whole bunch of damage, especially when paired with the Crucible set, because it actually does further improve the damage by 15%. And the entire combo does over 50 stance damage. 50 stance damage, and it sends enemies flying as well. So that's extremely underrated to have, especially due to the fact that it actually does do physical damage, which is nice to pair alongside your other spells that do elemental damage. Now, yes, this is going to be like a longer animation that does involve you having to stand still, so you can get staggered out of it, but if you do land the entire combo, it can be extremely deadly. Number 34, Pest Threads. Now, this is a physical-based projectile spell that does actually absolutely decimate larger bosses. It hits them multiple times, phases through them, and just ends up doing a metric fuck ton of damage. And when you combine this with the fact that it does only consume 11 faith, have a 19 FP cost, and have a relatively faster animation, it makes it incredibly easy to use. Now, another good thing that this spell actually does have is very good tracking. So it makes it good against more smaller enemies or enemies that do like to move around a whole bunch, especially on horseback. It makes it really good there as well. Now, despite it having all these good things, I still feel like it's outclassed in a bunch of areas. If you're using Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike, it's just going to be way better against larger bosses. It just does more damage. Now, yes, Pest Threads is easier to use and have a lower requirement. But if you end up getting your hands on Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike, getting a fully charged attack off just works way better. And against smaller enemies, it just doesn't do good damage at all. Like, the damage is just really bad. And it's to the point that I'd just rather have any other projectile attack, like Lightning Spear or Flamefall upon them. Those things can do more damage, even without the fully charged version. And they probably end up having, like, a faster animation. 
They consume less FP and they actually do stagger enemies as well. Pestered staggers like nothing, nor does it do like any stance damage. But the other spells, they at least stagger them and actually do some type of stance damage. So yes, this spell does do plenty of things well, but I don't think it actually does anything the best. Number 33, we have Scarlet Aeonia. Now this is one of the coolest looking spells in the entire game, but it also is actually pretty decent as well. It procs Scarlet Rod extremely quickly, and the purpose of it is to use it right at the beginning of the fight. You proc Scarlet Rod, then switch back to your main things. But yeah, this thing can do like over 600 Scarlet Rod buildup, which is like more than enough for almost every single boss in the entire game. And it actually does do like a beefed up version of Scarlet Rod. It can end up doing like 30% of an entire enemy's or boss's health bar, which just doing that in one attack is just always going to be really good. And the fact that you're doing it at point blank range means that you can use things like the Kinder Dora Exaltation and the Mushroom Crown, and you end up getting like 30% more damage for the next 20 seconds. So like honestly, that entire concept alone could actually help propel it into the S tier, but unfortunately there's like a bunch of downsides. One, it takes up three whole spell slots. It consumes 48 FP and actually does have like a longer animation. Especially those like recovery frames, you're like almost going to get hit every single time when you do use this spell. So it can be very risky as well. But going through New Game Plus with this spell is going to be really nice to have because just using it right at the beginning of the fight is just going to be very beneficial. Number 32, we have the Unendurable Frenzy spell. Now this is mainly going to be a PvP based spell because madness spells typically are. But this one still performs amazingly in PvE because it does so much damage. It shreds enemies' health bars that quickly. Now there are going to be a few downsides. One, it does consume a lot of FP when you have it fully charged, which is definitely the optimal way to use it. So a nice and popular pairing alongside with this build is going to be the Cerulean Hidden Tier to just like negate all types of FP cost. Another downside that it does have is that at the end of the animation, you're always like guaranteed to do this like follow-up attack that has like a very long animation. It does do some nice damage, but the fact that it's always going to happen and you can't really cancel it means that you're going to get hit almost every single time that you use this spell. And probably the last downside is the fact that it does like a bunch of madness build up to yourself, which typically you could pair this alongside some madness resist types of talismans, or you could just like leave your madness resist very small and pair it alongside the black dumpling helmet to which every single time you proc madness upon yourself, you end up just getting more damage anyway. Now, unfortunately, this means you do take some more FP and take some more health, which doesn't really help. But with how much damage this spell ends up outputting and with how it actually like stun locks smaller enemies, it can perform extremely well. 31 aspect of the crucible horns now this bad boy spell is incredibly fun to use now when it's not fully charged it doesn't really perform that well has pretty poor range doesn't really do good damage but when you have it fully charged you cover so much distance incredibly quickly and upon impact smaller types of enemies can get like yeeted up into the air you do like 30 stance damage the total overall damage is very nice as well and for only 18 fp you can't really go wrong now there are a few downsides to this spell one is that you have to be at point blank range to do damage, so against enemies that cannot get staggered or like knocked up in the air, you're probably going to get a hit like every single time. Two, the tracking is a bit off, you try to like redirect your attack sometimes and it just doesn't go in the direction that you want to. And one other thing that I wish about this spell that it had was thrusting damage. It does get physical damage, but it's only standard. I wish it was thrusting damage, that would have been so much cooler. Number 30, Erd Tree Heal. This thing heals for such a comically large amount of health, it's not even funny. When you're like later New Game Plus iterations, this is definitely going to be the spell to use because it's a quicker animation that can heal you for like your entire health bar if you have like 80 faith with the Erd Tree Seal. But probably the best thing about this spell is how well it can actually heal your allies. Obviously the healing effect is not going to be as good as it is on yourself when you heal other people like Spirit Ashes or Summons, but Erd Tree Heal actually summons allies just as well as Lord's Heal heals yourself. It's that good. And with how much range that it does get, it can just heal enemies from like halfway across the fucking planet. It's that good. It's like actually insane. Number 29, Blood Flame Talons. I don't know why this spell is not being used more. It has very low requirements, only consumes 12 FP. It's a relatively quicker animation. Now, yes, it's probably not going to do as much damage as things like Catch Flame or O Flame in that short amount of range that it actually does get, but it gets a whole bunch of blood loss build up, which if you actually pair this alongside like an Arcane type of build with a Dragon Convenience Seal, being that that gets an Arcane scaling, it would actually help scale the bleed, so you can just get even more blood loss build up when you actually pair it alongside Arcane builds, and it could probably outperform even things like O Flame at that point. And for like cheaper amounts of FP. Now, yes, I guess one other downside that it does have is that it has like a lingering effect. The explosion comes out like after you use the projectile. But the fact that you can just constantly keep spamming it over and over again for only 12 FP and do a whole bunch of bloodlust build up, it definitely ends up being one of the better spells in the game. Number 28, Borealis's Mist. Yes, it's a dragon spell, so it's going to perform really well. But the fact that you can actually do magic damage and frost build up at a distance with a faith and arcane build is just honestly insane. Like frostbite is already one of the best status effects in the entire game. And if you're doing it at range, it probably ends up being the best status effect. Because not only do you do that 10% flat damage, but you also end up debuffing enemies to make them take 20% more damage. Which doing it with a high damaging spell like a dragon communion spell obviously is going to make it just end up being broken. But the reason why it's still not going to get higher is because once again, I prefer the cheaper based ones because they just end up being more FP efficient. 
Number 27, Giant's Flame Take Thee. Now, this is another fire-based projectile attack. And this one, does upon impact, just makes enemies just get yeeted. This gets sent flying. And it has like a very large AoE as well, so it's good at actually hitting multiple enemies at once. The best way to probably use it is just to throw it at the ground. Because it'll end up just doing a bunch of damage and it still end up yeeting enemies away. Especially if enemies like to input read a whole bunch. And you can actually fully charge this spell as well to make it do even more damage and have an even larger AoE. Now the reason why I'm not going to put this one into the S tier is because it takes up two whole slots and it does consume 30 FP. Which is pretty expensive, especially if you compare it to something like Flamefall upon them. Which that spell consumes like only 18 FP. And it could do almost just as much damage and probably consistently hits enemies more. But obviously the Giant's Flame Take These build does that knockback effect and probably have a larger AoE. So it definitely has its use. Number 26, Dragonfire. I'm not going to like reiterate what I've been said about the Dragon Communion Incantations a thousand times. But the reason why this is not going to get into the S tier is because I like Theodorix's Magma just better as a Fire Dragon Communion Incantation. Number 25, Discus of Light. Probably the most underrated spell in the entire game because it goes incredibly far. Actually does some nice amount of damage, has low requirements, even though it is a Golden Order incantation, so it does require intelligence, but it's only 13. The projectile actually does return to you to result in more damage, and you actually can use things like Karen Retaliation and Golden Retaliation to deflect those projectiles back. But the best thing about it, it consumes 3 FP. 3 FP! That is absolutely insane. It makes it the most like FP efficient spell in the entire game. The FP to damage ratio is just out of this world. You can just use a hundred different projectiles, do so much damage with this thing. So yes, this is like the reason why Triple Rings of Light ended up getting lower on the list because this spell just travels faster, goes further, and for 3 FP, like come on now. Now yes, the reason why it's not going to get into the S tier is because Holy Damage, once again, it is really good and viable, but it's still definitely like the worst damage type in the entire game. And this spell doesn't like stagger it like smaller enemies. It just like phases straight through them, nor does it have like any tracking as well. But the projectile is that fast that it can just make up for it. Number 24, Exix Decay. Now this is a Scarlet Rot Dragon Communion spell, which obviously that combination just seems incredibly deadly. Now this one is just going to get lower on the list because this one is the more expensive version. I tend to prefer like the cheaper based ones because they tend to be a lot more FP efficient. Now these spells used to be incredibly broken, but they ended up like nerfing this Scarlet Rot build up to the point where like Scarlet Aeonia is just going to proc Scarlet Rot just a lot more efficiently. But the fact that you can do it at a distance obviously means that it still has a use. And it's a nice way to do like some physical damage at a distance as well. Number 23, we have a Black Blade. Now this is a holy based projectile, which yes, holy damage isn't the best, but it also does add a destined death damage over time effect, which is percentile based and actually works better than the Black Flame damage over time effect. But it also does do a flat 10% to an enemy's health bar. So it does end up having just only 90% of their health as soon as you hit with Destined Death. Now this spell is definitely going to be one of the better options to have in like later New Game Plus iterations because when enemies have a large amount of health, Destined Death will just absolutely shred through it and Black Blade does it extremely well, but it's mainly going to be better at point blank range because the projectile part doesn't really do that good a damage, but at point blank range it just does a whole bunch more, especially if you use the follow-up attack, which unfortunately the follow-up attack makes it consume a total of 50 FP which is very expensive, and there are probably other spells that could just do more damage for like a lot less FP. But as I was saying, for New Game Plus and beyond, this one is probably going to perform better. And another good thing about this spell is that it actually does stack with the Destined Death effect of either the Malachus Black Blade and the Black Knife Ashwar, which Blade of Death, the Black Knife Ashwar, actually end up preferring more so than this spell because it has a faster animation, it's a lot cheaper, and it just does more damage, but obviously that's comparing an Ashwar to a spell, so it doesn't really mean much. Number 22, we have Howl of Shibriri. Now, this spell does terrible damage, but the purpose of it is going to be its body buff because it does add 25% more damage for 40 seconds. But unfortunately, it makes you take 30% more damage throughout its duration. So if you're a person that gets hit a whole bunch, I wouldn't recommend using it. And also, if you're doing physical or fire damage, I'd just rather stick to Flame Grant Me Strength. Because although it does a little bit less damage, it's still 20% more damage and there's no downsides or any negative effects at all. But if you're a person that's using Lightning or Holy Damage, being that there's no body buffs in the game to actually boost those damage types, this could actually be the best option for you. And if you have the Black Dumpling equipped, Proccing Madness upon yourself with this spell can actually just further improve your damage by 10%, which obviously can just result in a bunch more damage. Number 21, Scouring a Black Flame. Now, yes, this is going to be another Black Flame incantation, which they're all going to be really good in terms of damage. Now, Scouring Black Flame is going to be more of your AoE-based one and more for crowd control because it can hit multiple enemies at once. 
Now the downside to it is that the hit detection is just very odd. If you use it on a hill, sometimes it can just like miss. So if you're finding enemies that are smaller than you, it can just go straight over their head. But this book can actually go pretty far, have a nice horizontal spread. You can fully charge it to make it do even more damage. And it actually does have the potential to be the highest damaging Black Flame incantation as well. As you can see on the gameplay, sometimes it just hits an enemy twice. I don't know what the gauge is for it. Sometimes it's like his positioning or timing, but about like 20% of the time it just does like twice as much damage, which obviously twice as much damage is going to be really good. So it can perform just as well as like any S tier incantation, but being that how inconsistent that it does perform, it only can get an A tier. Number 20, Electrify Armament. Now this is going to be your weapon damaging buff as lightning damage, which is a very solid damage type. It only has a 15 faith requirement, and you don't even need much faith to actually benefit off using this at all, because a lot of the greases in this game don't really add much damage. So this thing can just outperform it like almost every single one as long as you just go spec into 15 faith. Now weapon buffs in this game aren't going to be as useful as they were in previous games because the meta tends to be just go spec into one type of stat and not really have like split even like strength and faith or dexterity and faith. And the only time you would really have split even dexterity and faith is if you're like at extremely higher levels or if you have like a particular weapon that scales off those stats. Which particular weapons that scale off those stats are mainly going to be weapons that cannot be buffed anyway. So damaging weapon buffs don't really have much of a use. But if you were to use one for damage, this would be the one. Number 19, Fortisax's Lightning Spear. Now this is very similar to Ancient Dragon's Lightning Spear. The difference being is that this one has two. You can just throw two to the ground, which means obviously twice as much damage and twice as much stance damage. Now the downsides being is that this has higher requirements and does consume a bit more FP. It's only 10 more FP, so it's going to be a lot more FP efficient. And obviously you do get stuck in like a longer animation, so Ancient Dragon's Lightning Spear is probably going to be easier to use. But you still have a little bit of hype drama when using the animation, and you can still just get off both attacks pretty easily. And if you do... You do 44 stance damage and a whole bunch of damage in total, and it still actually ends up knocking enemies backwards. Now, it's still going to be mainly used for single target damage. It does have like those aftershock wave effects that go outwards, but they don't really do that much damage to the point where you're supposed to use it as like an AoE or a crowd control spell. But the thing is, those aftershock effects can actually hit enemies multiple times. So against like larger enemies, it can just do even more damage. But if you want to use like a lightning spell that can do damage to larger types of enemies, there's like another spell that you'll see later on this list that does it way better for like the same amount of FP. 18 Rotten Breath. Now this is going to be the cheaper based Dragon Communion Scarlet Rot Incantation, which these spells have been nerfed to be like half as effective in terms of their Rot buildup. So it is going to take like multiple attempts to proc Scarlet Rot, which is still going to be pretty decent, but Dragon Communion spells do that much damage to where you're probably going to kill most things in like a couple hits anyway. So you're better off just going into like a damaging based one. But this one is still going to be good because I'd prefer the cheaper ones in terms of like FP cost. And it's going to be a nice way to do physical damage at a distance. If enemies are just more weak to physical compared to elemental damage, this could be like your best option. And Scarlet Rod is still going to perform really well in like later new game plus iterations because it'll have more health and that percentile damage you get with Scarlet Rod is going to be very good. Number 17, Frozen Lightning Spear. It's a high damaging lightning projectile attack that gets frost that is literally all that you need to know. But if I were to talk about it though, it does actually have a three-part storm attack. And if every single one of those projectiles actually end up hitting, it does a lot of damage. So against larger bosses, it can perform extremely well. And it does upwards of 100 frost build up if all of those projectiles hit, which will only take like a few projectiles to end up proccing frost, which will end up being 10% flat damage and 20% more damage for the next 20 seconds. Now there are a couple of downsides to this spell. One, it does consume 29 FP, which is not the cheapest thing in the world. Two, the hit detection is very weird, like at point blank range. There's like no AoE for like the initial slam attack, like there is for Fortisax's Lightning Spear. And the storm attack afterwards kind of starts a bit too far in front, because sometimes enemies can just be too close and always end up missing entirely, and you just miss out on a whole bunch of damage. Now this spell is probably going to be outclassed by something like Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike, but being that this one you can get earlier in the game, you could just use it until you acquire it. Number 16, Black Flame. Now this is going to be the last of the Black Flame incantations that we talked about, and I consider this one to be the best because it goes the furthest, it's the cheapest, you can get it right at the beginning of the game as well. And obviously, once again, Black Flame percentile damage over time is going to be amazing, especially against enemies with larger health pools. So this might end up being the better projectile to have in later New Game Plus iterations. But in terms of regular New Game, I just feel like some of the other projectiles still perform a little bit better because they might end up going further, have a faster projectile because this one is still pretty slow and is very easy to dodge. And they probably just do more damage as well. But if you do nothing but spam this spell the entire game, it will still be a very easy experience. Now getting into the S tier at number 15, we have Dragon. Dragon Claw. Now the S tier is going to be the tier that everybody ends up skipping to to see what's going on here, but this is where all the good spells are going to be at. These are like the best of the best. Everything gets fucked up with these spells right here, and Dragon Claw is definitely one of them. It's a Dragon Communion spell, which all of them are just going to be really good, and this one just does such high amounts of damage, 
in a very short range, or you get a bunch of high parameter throughout the animation, and you do get a follow-up attack that can just do even more stance damage to poise break enemies extremely quickly, and that can like flatten enemies to the ground. Now the downsides to this is that it is going to be like a longer animation, so you're going to get hit like almost every single time that you do use it, but you're probably going to win that trade more times than not due to how much damage this actually does get. And something like Dragon Maw might be able to outclass it because it is easy to use and have a little bit more range, but if you have like the opening that's long enough, I'd probably rather have Dragon Claw because it can just output more damage. I remember doing a playthrough where I was only allowed to do damage using both Dragon Claw and Dragon Maw, and I like them both the same, but I definitely think Dragon Maw is easier. Number 14, Burn O Flame. This spell can hit for so much damage, it's not even funny. Those pillars can just like yeet enemies up into the air, and they can just end up getting stun locked and yeeted from pillar to pillar, and can result in such copious amounts of damage that it can definitely trivialize the entire game. Now, there are going to be some downsides as to why I don't really like this spell. One, if you get staggered as soon as you use it, a lot of those pillars are just not going to come out. You have to like finish the animation. Two, it's very RNG heavy. Those pillars don't go in like the same locations every single time. Sometimes like all the projectiles could dismiss and other times like half of them would hit. And probably the main reason is that Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike exists and that one just works very similar but just does way more damage. It's way more consistent because all the projectiles go in the exact same direction every single time. It does lightning damage, which is a better damage type than fire. And if you get staggered just as you use it, the projectiles are still guaranteed to come out. But Burner Flame, I feel like is more consistent against enemies that are smaller, depending on how like the RNG works. Because the pillars can actually like yeet smaller enemies up into the air. Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike doesn't do it. And those pillars do spawn closer towards the player. So if enemies are close by, they can just get hit multiple times. Whereas Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike is a bit more widespread. So Burner Flame does have its more niche uses as to why it's better but i feel like i'd rather have ancient dragons landing strike almost every single time number 13 frenzied burst this thing goes so fucking far like really far it's like the best sniper in the entire game and it doesn't just go far it like travels there very quickly as well like it's such a fast projectile now using it at closer distances in like the heat of battle is probably not going to be the best play you're definitely better off just sitting at the back of the map and just fully charging this bitch because it can actually do a lot of damage, especially fully charged. Like ignore the fact that this thing is probably built for PvP due to the fact that it's a madness incantation. It definitely performs as one of the best PvE projectiles. Number 12, Grail's Roll. This is an AoE attack that actually does a little bit of damage. You do have like longer recovery animations, so you're going to get hit like almost every single time that you use it. Unless you're fighting someone that's like smaller because they'll just get knocked to the ground. But the best thing about this spell is that when you land this attack on an enemy, they end up doing 15% less damage and they'll end up taking 10% more damage. And the fact that it's a debuff is really good because it'll just end up working with all the other buffs that you do have. So if you're going with like a Dragon Communion build, you should just always have this spell on. Just use it right at the beginning of the fight debuff the enemy, it lasts like a whole last minute, and you can just go ahead and fuck up the boss that way. And I also do like to use this spell to clean up kills as well, because actually it comes out pretty fast, the animation itself, and it does like just enough damage to like just finish off an enemy. Number 11, Lightning Spear. This is like the good or reliable projectile that's easy to use, it's so incredibly fast, goes really far, actually has a nice charge variant as well to make it do even more damage. It does lightning damage, which is arguably one of the best damage types in the entire game. It's cheap, Low requirements, there's like nothing more that you really need. Like it's probably not going to perform the best in terms of damage, but it's so easy and so consistent. It's nice. Number 10, Glenstone Breath. Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of dragon incantations in the S tier because they're all just amazing. But Glenstone Breath is especially good because, as I mentioned before, the lesser versions and the cheaper versions are a lot more FP efficient. And for whatever reason, the magic base one just does more damage than the rest. It just does more damage than the fire one, the scarlet rot one. I don't know why it just does, but it's especially unique because... Doing magic damage with a Faith and Arcane build is just incredibly underrated. You don't really get much magic damage at all with these type of builds. So just having one that can do it is really good against enemies that you're fighting against that might be weaker to magic. But yeah, the only thing you've got to know is that it does a lot of damage. Number 9, Blood Flame Blade. Probably the best weapon buff in the entire game. Adds more fire damage and adds bleed to your weapon, which bleed is obviously really good in this game. Now the fire damage that it does add doesn't really do much. When you have like higher faith levels, you're going to notice that it probably adds like a decent amount of fire damage. But the best thing about this spell is that it adds a flat amount of bleed. It adds roughly 40 blood loss build up to your weapon. Which the fact that it adds a flat amount of bleed means that you don't have to worry about leveling up your seal. Doesn't matter what seal that you use. You don't have to spec into faith or arcane at all. You just meet the minimum requirements of this spell, which is only 12 faith and 10 arcane. And it just adds 40 bleed to your weapon, which you can pair this alongside other weapons that already get bleed. Something like the Bloodhound Fang or go have like a Keen Infusion on like a Naga Kibo or an Uchi Katana, Scavenger's Curve Sword, and just add Blood Flame to those weapons to just further enhance the Blood Loss build up. And not only would you probably do more damage than you would with those types of infusions compared to on a Cult Infusion, but you could probably do just as much Blood Loss build up. There's so many like weapons and weapon skills that you can pair this alongside with to make this ridiculously broken builds. Like this thing is actually insane. 
Number eight, Flame Fall Upon Them. I will stand by this incantation to the day I die because I consider this one to be the best throwable projectile out of all the incantations. This thing can actually go very far. If you frame it and just throw it upwards, it could probably end up going further than the Lightning Spear. It only consumes 16 FP and it probably does more damage than all the other projectiles. And not only that, it actually does it in a horizontal spread. So it's good at hitting enemies that like to dodge around or input read. It's good at hitting multiple enemies at once. And you might think that you actually need to hit with all the projectiles to do good damage. But no, you're only going to hit with three of the 12 projectiles that it throws out to actually do maximum damage. And combined with the fact that you can just fully charge it as well and still just do ridiculous damage for only 16 FP. 16 FP? It's so cheap. Number seven, Theodorix's Magma. Now I did say that's the named base or the more expensive dragon incantations are just not going to be as valuable as the cheaper ones because they just tend to be more FP efficient and probably the fact that you can't use them on horseback. But the thing is, but the thing is with this build, it does consume that 25% more FP, but it does 40% more damage. So the upgrade is well worth it. And it actually can be used on horseback as well. Now, obviously this one is going to be acquired much later in the game compared to regular Magma Breath, but I definitely recommend getting it. Because look at this shit, look how much damage it does to Radagon. It just like fucks him up. The follow-up attack that you actually get does so much damage, it's not even funny. Now, it's probably not going to be as consistent as some of the other dragon incantations because it doesn't go as far. But if you time your attack correctly and you land this combo, you can just be devastating. Number six, Dragon Maw. This bad boy does so much damage for only 34 FP, has a nice lunge, does over 40 stance damage. Now, no, it's not going to do as much damage as the entire combo that Dragon Claw does get, but it does have like a quicker animation. It does lunge a lot further and it has a better recovery animation as well, so it's like a lot easier to use. But yeah, if you plan on going with a dragon type of build, definitely add Dragon Maw to the mix. Number five, Flame Grants Me Strength. Probably the best body buff in the entire game. It adds 20% more physical damage, 20% more fire damage, and 10% faster stamina recovery speed, which all of those buffs are just absolutely insane. There's like no downsides at all. I guess the only bad thing I can say about it is it does only last 30 seconds, which means that you're probably gonna have to use it multiple times throughout a boss fight. But by far, probably the best thing about this is that it has a 15 faith requirement. You can benefit off this thing without even having to go into a faith build. Just go spec into like a little bit of faith. You could only go into like 10 faith and use something like the two finger heirloom to meet the requirements and then use the spell. And you just get so much more damage, more stamina recovery speed, and it's a body buff. So it's going to stack with golden vow as well. It's just really fucking good. Number four, dragon eyes, probably the dragon communion incantation I use the most. Now I'll mention it one more time, but the reason why I like the lesser versions more than the more expensive ones is because they're much more FP efficient. 25% cheaper FP cost, but they only do 17% less damage. They actually do have more of a horizontal spread, so they can hit multiple enemies at once. You can use them on horseback. You don't have to jump in the air to use it, so if you get hit, you can probably still continue going on if you actually have enough poise. Whereas like for the other versions, you get hit one time, then you collapse straight to the ground and lose a bunch of stamina. But specifically why I consider Dragon Ice to be the best one is because doing Frost at a distance is just ridiculous. It does so much Frost build up, and it can proc Frost straight away. And obviously Frost does 10% flat damage, and for the next 20 seconds, enemies will just take 20% more damage. So we're going to end up being the highest damaging Dragon Communion spell in the entire game. All you're going to do is just sit at the back of the map because these projectiles go so incredibly far, they bounce off walls and hit multiple times. They're just fucking insane. Number three, Golden Vow. Now this spell actually does give you 15% more damage and 10% damage negation for 80 seconds. And this is an aura buff, so it's going to stack with other types of body buffs. So if you want to stack flame grammy strength for more damage or other types of damage negation buffs, it can work. Now, people typically will just use the Ash of War because it doesn't have any requirements. But the difference being is that this one just gets like 2.5% more damage and damage negation and lasts about 30 seconds longer, which it might not seem worth it being that it has like a 25 faith requirement. But the thing is, you actually can use this with a minimum of 10 faith. What actually I like to do when I'm not using a faith type build, I'll go use the faith tier and the two finger heirloom. I'll cast the spell and I could just switch off those things. And then boom, all of a sudden you have the golden vow spell active, which might seem like it's a lot of effort to pull off every single time you want to fight a boss. But if you have a faith type build, golden vow spell should always be active. Number two, catch flame, a spell that you get right at the beginning of the game. That's so incredibly cheap, the most basic spell known to man, but this outputs so much DPS. It's not even funny. You get it right at the beginning and it can carry you all the way to the end and new game plus and beyond because the attack is so fast and you can keep spamming it over and over and you can do it really quickly with like rolling, jumping and running attacks. But yeah, I don't know how it actually does this much damage in just one little catch flame, but it does, and it just makes for one of the best spells, if not the best spell in the entire game. Number one, Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. This is the uh, fuck shit up spell. You use it, and it just fucks shit up. Everything around you just instantly dies. It does that much damage, it's not even funny. Against larger bosses, it just instantly deletes them, but even against smaller enemies, it still does that much damage as well. 
every single one of those lightning strikes can hit super duper hard. And they actually go out very far, especially when fully charged. They actually have so much range and it can clear out an entire room. Now, these projectiles are pretty far spread apart, so sometimes things can just miss. But if that happens, just try again because they'll just end up dying anyway. So yeah, just go ahead, stack some buffs together, fully charge this bad boy and just enjoy beating the game. Anyway, it's over. Thank God. I never want to do that ever again until like next week when I go rank all the Ashes of War. So definitely do subscribe for that. Um, but in the meantime, I'm probably just going to be live on Twitch. So definitely check me out there as well in the middle of doing a Souls Marathon beating every single game with a dagger. So that's pretty fun. Anyway, catch you guys around. Bye.